Hey guys, wanted to pop in real quick and remind you that our Sand and Sea collection is currently available at RoyaltySoaps.com. Hi, welcome to me making my absolute favorite soap of the month. If you like photos that look like this, this, and this, well, let me just say this soap is for you because I've combined all of those elements. I have added a gorgeous little stone on top and we have put together like the perfect aquatic summer moment for your bathroom, okay? Anyways, you guys enjoyed this soap making video and I'll see you in the outro. All right, let's go ahead and pour our lye water solution in just like so. And then we're gonna blend on high. Okay, I have to split this into five different buckets evenly. So, wha bam And movie magic. So, I'm going to set these off to the side. We're definitely going to have to work one at a time because if I'm guessing right, this fragrance soil is going to seize up. Let's get our first one done. So, this entire soap is colored with two different colors plus a little bit of titanium dioxide and black oxide to deepen the shades or lighten the shades. The two colors are Sea Glass by Mad Micah and Bermuda Triangle by Mad Micahs. So these are gorgeous, they're new, and they're ocean themed, and they're like exactly the right colors I needed. So this is a very dark teal. It's a very, very, very dark teal. And then this is a little more blue than Tahitian teal, but it's still definitely within the yellow blue. It's greeny, it's not purpley. How about that? <laughs> And we're going to work our way up to light. We're going to start with the darkest color and work our way up to the lightest color. So this is Bermuda Triangle with a little bit of black oxide just to make it even darker. Here's my fragrance oil blend. And just like all the other fragrance oil blends this month, this is a custom. You cannot get it anywhere else because I made it in-house here at Royalty Soap. So it smells a little bit like the ocean. Um, think driftwood. Think um, ozonic top notes salty air, sea breezes, think that. I'm going to use this first layer as my test for whether or not this fragrance will misbehave. I don't think it's going to, but better safe than sorry. Awesome. Let's go ahead and blend this up. <laughs> Look at that. That is magnificent. All right, let me go ahead and pour this in. Wow. And one of the reasons why it is handy, it's not necessary, but it is handy to have a lot of different shades of colors pre-blended is because it saves you a lot of time. Could I make this color by taking like a hydrated chrome green, an ultramarine blue, and a black oxide? Maybe, but it would take me a lot of trial and error and having someone else pre-blend things for you. If you are a business owner, oh man, it saves you so much time. Of course, the other side of that is costs a little more money to have all those different types of colorants in your studio. So if you are on a like a shoestring budget, always get red, yellow, blue, and then titanium dioxide and black oxide because you can make the rainbow with that. Okay, let's see just how dark this next layer is. It should be a little lighter. Okay, let's see. All right, good. This is literally the perfect, perfect, perfect amount because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drip this next layer into the first layer like this. And you can see it's puncturing, but it's not like turning it over on itself. It's just grabbing a hold of this soap. And I'm going to go back and forth probably three times. So this is my second time. And now I'm going to go back for my third time. And then I'm going to pour the rest of the soap on top. Okay. So I made all those lines. Let's pour the rest of the soap on top. It's like this. And it's just thick enough to do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to create its own layer. I may have poured too much. Next time I might have to do only two passes because I'm going to be spread a little thin with this layer. Okay, just gonna spread this around real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be flat, but it does look like I do have enough. Get that whole layer covered, which is awesome. And then I'm gonna hurry up and blend up the next layer because I don't want this to set much past how it already is. Okay, I have a feeling I'm gonna hold this up from a little higher because yeah, it's already thickened up quite a bit, which is not ideal. I really wanted it to be a lot thinner than this, but it might still get the point across, which is just to puncture that second layer and make it look kind of blobby. So 
All right, whatever. We're going to be happy with that. And I did blend this third layer a lot less. So I think it'll give me some more time to play with. Yeah. And look at the difference in the color. It's barely there. All right, round four. All right, I'm feeling a lot better about this one. Yeah, there we go. A lot better. I'll be able to put more into this layer. It's going to look so pretty. All right, last layer. Perfect. A little thick on this one too, but you know what? That adds consistency, doesn't it? Right? Go ahead, ladle this on top. All right, good heavens. <laughs> that took quite some time, but... It is done and it does look good. Before I measure out my glitter, please look at this glitter blend. I mean, could it be any more perfect? I don't think so. So this is a little bit of Mermaid Tails glitter. That is from Mad Micah's. It's a little bit of a couple different things from the good glitter and a couple different things from Latch Key, I believe. So basically my like go-to glitter people, I should also add a little bit of hollow from Bramble berry into this because that would look so good. Then I could basically have all of my suppliers in there. I'm missing one from Fizz Fairy. I need to go get one of those too. But yeah, I was just trying to use up all the glitter and I made this little custom blend and it's looking super good. To the soap, I'm going to be adding some Amazonite. It is so gorgeous. It's these beautiful teals that are in the soap with some balanced like earthy brown and some creams. It's just a gorgeous stone. It's one of my favorites. You know, before I started filming, I was watching this video that was on my recommended feed. Um, it's by a guy called Caleb Hammer. And I think what he is doing is a financial audit of somebody. It's like 27 year old with more debt than anyone should ever have. A financial audit. <laughs> The, this is one of the most fascinating, informative, educational videos I've watched in a really long time. So if you are interested in that sort of thing, go for it. I remember when credit card churning was a huge thing. Between Caleb and I, I'm the one that is more interested in finance, credit cards, debt, like all of that fascinates me. My dad has a business degree and he minored in finance. So it's something he's very familiar with. It was something that he taught us kids a lot about, a lot about debt, a lot about budgeting, a lot about credit cards, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think that's why whenever I get on YouTube, it's always my YouTube recommended. That's always like, <laughs> Catherine, we know what you're interested in. You want to see somebody talk about credit card debt. <laughs> But this guy is so genuine. Like, that's what I have really loved about watching this video is he's genuine. He's very much lovingly firm. So the person that he has on really needs a lot of help. And he kind of just doesn't shy away from giving them really just strict, difficult critiques that could change their life. So I don't know. Truly enjoying that. Probably going to watch more videos. <laughs> you guys should tell me which YouTube videos y'all have been doing a lot. Um, call me a millennial, but I still still watch YouTube on the regular. I saw a TikTok the other day where um, someone is 28, 29 was like, what is Gen Z wearing? Gen Z wears dressy pants and millennials wore like dressy shirts. I'm trying to change to wear dressy pants because I don't want to be, I guess their age. I don't know. Like, I guess they don't want to have outdated fashion. And I was looking at both outfits and was like, man, I've never been so dressed up. <laughs> like millennial. Gen C, we don't care. I've never had a pair of like dress pants. I've never had a pair of pants like that. I also don't work in corporate America, so that makes a little more sense for me. But they're like, oh yeah, they wear dressy like slacks. I'm like, never owned a slack in my life. I mean, maybe this is just spoken to like, I don't know, a country, Texas person, but I honestly live really close to Dallas and I do know people that dress like that, but couldn't be me. Never, never owned that. 
Oh, look at that one. So gorge. But are we still doing that in 2023? Are we still trying to dress our age or not dress like a old person or ew, millennial style so outdated? I, I honestly, I don't know enough about it to be able to tell you what could even be categorized as millennial style. I remember when the word chuggy came out and my bestie girl Caroline had to explain it to me because I had no idea what that meant. Oh, I feel like because of these stones, I may have to cut this soap like individually because <laughs> these are huge. Oh well, I hope it means that people feel like they're getting a lot of bang for their buck because they're getting a nice big rock on top of their soap. I don't know, it just seems like trends change every like two weeks and so people are like, oh that's not how we do our makeup anymore. Now it's like dewy skin only. Oh we don't do our eyebrows like that anymore. Now it's soap brows. Oh wait, now we're going back to thin brows. Oh now it's bushy eyebrows. I'm like, y'all, can y'all just pick what y'all like without worrying about what anyone else likes? Like organically. I think it would be a really good idea for some people to just like sit down, think about what they like to wear, make a little mood board, and then just stick with it and who cares? Like, I don't know. Anyways, the soap is done. It looks fantastic. Spritzy, spritzy, spritzy on the top. I'm gonna cover it up. We'll be back in 18 to 24 hours, cut it up, and let's, let's get a little look. Let's get a little look. Some of these, some of these rocks. They're so pretty. All right, we're gonna put it to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Yo, look at the glitter. Hold on. Let me bring it up close so that you can see. <gasps> and look how these layers and colors turned out. I'm literally not changing a thing. Well, that is to say I'm not changing anything as far as the colors go. However, I did decide to texture this top a little bit more. Now it kind of looks like a scales or like ocean waves. Um, it's just textured and it looks a lot better with the rocks. Kind of makes the glitter stand out a little bit more. Um, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and cut it. I, I am, I'm always so bad about stone placement. I am praying that these are where they're supposed to be. <gasps> wow. Okay. That couldn't have worked out much better. Okay, and let me show you the middle. Oh my word. Would you just look at that? That is so crazy. And it smells so good. It's very fresh. It's very clean. It doesn't smell like suntan lotion or very beachy in that way. It just smells clean and fresh. It smells aquatic without being salty, if that makes any sense. Okay, question of the day. It's kind of funny. What is something that old people love that you don't understand? <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, why do you guys love this so much? Okay, I can think of one. I actually really like prunes, but I do not understand the prune juice. Like prune juice, no. Fig Newtons, no. <laughs> like, I, I really wanna know, why is that such a thing? My grandfather, my dad's dad, uh, before he passed away was just an absolute, I mean, that man lived on peppermints. And I like a peppermint, but I don't love a pep, does anyone besides old people just love a peppermint? <laughs> like why? Is it because that that's like one of the only things they can taste really well? I truly don't know. Okay, I wanna hear about it down in the comments below. I already know a lot of these answers are gonna be funny and we're all gonna have a giggle. <laughs> Okay, so can you see why this is my favorite one for the month? Like the swirl, the smell, the stone. It's just giving everything I wanted. Now, if you like a little crystal on top of your soap, I have another soap that I didn't film, but I did make this month. It looks like this. It has a clear quartz on top, a lot of mermaidy glitter. It smells really, really good. It's really like kind of floral, kind of fruity. It's a good one, but I didn't make a video of it. So I'm just letting you know that's a available. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today. Maybe it's time to organize your crystal collection. I actually have quite a large crystal collection, mainly because of royalty soaps, and I know that some of those things have fallen off my windowsill, and it's time to go put them back. <laughs> I don't really care what you do, just be sure you do something for you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, bye for now. Meow.